on the the Russian plane. So they need an AWACS for that, and it was one from Saudi Arabia. But at the same time, you have another AWACS in the sky, who is from NATO, comes from uh, from Greece, and it's, it is unclear if uh, the the Turkish Air Force use only the Saudi uh, AWACS or also the the NATO AWACS. But uh, uh, in all the, the documents we have, including the the, the, the radars, um, uh, shows that uh, um, the operation was prepared long time before, long time before. And this is, of course, um, uh, this correspond with uh, um, the alert that. Uh, Fouad Avni, a famous uh, whistleblower from uh, Turkey, uh, announced one month before this uh, this attack. He announced that uh, uh, the Turkish uh, government will destroy an, uh, a Russian plane to oust Russia from the north of uh, Syria. But uh, as you see, the result is uh, absolutely contrary of that. And uh, right now, Russia is extending its presence in the north of Syria. All right. Uh, we're just about out of time. Is there anything to add? Uh, no, 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 nothing, uh, except that uh, um, it's very difficult right now to understand who is uh, governing in the United States. Because... Uh, <laughs> Yes, yes, really. We have two different powers at the same time, and uh, it's difficult to know who is deciding for the military. We will we'll try to clarify it as best we can. Uh, but we, we got rid of Alan. It's time for uh, Ashton Carter to be fired. See you soon, Jerry. Thank you. We'll be back in a minute. Welcome back to World Crisis Radio. Webster Tarpley here in Washington, D.C. One more segment, a little bit under the weather here, begging for everyone's uh, kind uh, indulgence. But that's uh, that's something interesting, huh? A mass uprising, a Vespri Siciliani, a mass uprising against the foreign yoke, because those jihadis are foreign. They're Uyghurs, Chechens, Saudis, Libyans. They're not Syrians. And remember, the Syrians, I'd say along with the Iraqis, but the Syrians perhaps more than anybody, that's your highly educated, tolerant, and uh, socially advanced group in the uh, in the Arab world, much more so than, say, the backward, uh, the backward uh, people there in Saudi. Arabia. Now, Egypt, of course, is also in the highly developed group. And the idea that we're seeing a re-edition of the Suez debacle of 1956, we'll talk about that next time. Remember what that was. The British and the French did a sneak attack with landings at uh, Alexandria Port Said. The Israelis attacked through the Sinai. And what stopped it was the Eisenhower administration. George Humphrey, the Secretary of the Treasury, say, you want to do that, you pay, we're cutting financial support to you. Down they went, and down went Sir Anthony Eden. So maybe Cameron and the British uh, and the um, Hollande, maybe they'll go down too uh, as a result of this Turkish, French, Israeli, uh, and British attempt to set up a pseudo-Kurdistan, in other words, a, a fake non-Kurdistan. Okay, a couple of other things to finish up now on the issues of the, uh, oh, well, we're, well, next week is the Republican debate. Oh, my heavens, it's going to be on Tuesday evening on CNN, and the Tax Wall Street Party will live tweet the GOP debate next Tuesday, so tune in. As we mentioned before, the Senate has passed a five-day um, continuing resolution. House expected to do the same thing. One interesting thing that came out is how do you tie up and practically cripple 
the great United States of America with 40 to 50 uh, fascistic, hysterical, uh, irrational, subjectivist uh, members of Congress. Well, you've got to have your 40 or 50. That's the Tea Party. Uh, and then you have the Hope Yes, Vote No conference or caucus, 120 of these reactionary Republicans. Uh, the first were fascists. These are now reactionaries. And they say, well, we, we vote against everything. We hope it passes for the good of the country, but we're not going to stick our necks out. So that's that. And then only 80 are loyal to Bluebeard Ryan. 80. So that's what the Republican Party has come down to, a speaker who's got just 80 uh, supporters. All this written up in the daily briefings of the week. Now, Last week, I talked about Pearl Harbor. Whenever we do this, we always get the Kimmel and Short uh, brigade of followers coming forward to defend their people. And we have the Stinnett lovers. We have the Roosevelt haters, the New Deal haters coming forward. The whole Chicago Tribune, Regnery, all those people, they have to say, oh, the evil Roosevelt provoked the wonderful peace-loving Japanese. And this includes, by the way, the Paul Todd faction, because Ron Paul uh, has embraced this entire stuff. The, the Roosevelt haters have not developed a single idea since December 7th, 1941. And indeed, one of the America first sort of pro-Nazi types was giving a speech at the day of Pearl Harbor and was trashing Roosevelt. And then the news came in of the Japanese attack and this uh, – this character from the uh, America First had to he had to reorient his speech in the course of the event and essentially start saying the things that these people have been repeating ever since. So here's here's a very low low level, but I think absolutely convincing area of uh, of analysis. Right? Let's go from Kimmel and Short then to Petraeus and Allen. Now, by way of people like Westmoreland and so forth, look, the order given to Kimmel and Short was you should conduct appropriate reconnaissance. Now, Short and Kimmel especially were adamant saying, if you don't do everything, you must do nothing. And they were supported in one of the Navy Board of Inquiry, Boards of Inquiry, by none other than Bull Halsey, who is uh, one of the most overrated uh, people. You look at his, you know, really not very clever behavior at the Battle of Leyte Gulf and so forth. But they trotted out old Bull Halsey to say, yeah, Kimmel was right, because the Navy wanted to protect itself from negative publicity. Now, Here's what here's what Kimmel and Short had to 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 mount a um, significant uh, search reconnaissance to see if the Japanese fleet was coming since 1928 and a drill was done in 1928. They had been drilling. The main danger to Pearl Harbor is a Japanese aircraft carrier mounted attack coming from the north, north to northwest, practically. So. Uh, what were you throwing out there, right? If you just sit there and wait, you're going to get clobbered. You've got to have ways to get your Army aviation, the so-called Pineapple Air Force. Uh, you got to get that. The Hawaiian Air Force, got to get that in the air. Got to have the Navy a aircraft ready to go. You got to have your reconnaissance planes out. And you got to have a screen of uh, warships out there. So what, what could they do? Um, let's just take a look. On Pearl Harbor Day, uh, the important ships that I would uh, focus on would be eight light cruisers that Kimmel had, and those had float planes on the back. I think most of them one, but maybe some more modern two float plane versions. Eight light cruisers. Now, every one of those can go out there and can cover 250 miles on either side, right? So that would give you a lot. You send some of those out to 200 miles, 300 miles, uh, make sure that they have the planes up at dawn every morning. You've got 50 five zero destroyers. Now, could not 10 or 15 of those been sent north to try to scout the Japanese fleet? You had 33 submarines. 
those could also have been used for exactly the same scouting purpose. And 100 patrol bombers. Now, this would have included the PBY Catalina, lumbering but very long range. You had the B-18 Bolo bomber, 500 miles out. And yes, you had some B-17s, not a lot, maybe 10. But those could have been sent out, and they could get out to about 750 miles. So it was all that that could have been done. Uh, and they did none of it. Zero, nothing. Uh, instead, he took uh, Kimmel, went to a luau uh, that night before. So uh, the other thing is the, the uh, top brass in the Navy Department said, you should develop some sampans. Now, sampans, maybe we'd call them trawlers. Maybe we'd call them you know, irregular uh, ships. You have the Dunkirk experience. You can do a lot with small ships under certain circumstances. Dunkirk uh, in June of 1940. And then we also have the fact that when the U.S. mounted the Doolittle Raid towards Japan in the spring of 1942, just a couple of months after this, it was a Japanese fishing trawler that discovered the attackers and got off a warning. Now, the, the problem was that the people in Tokyo didn't realize that this was going to be an attack using light to medium bombers flown off the deck of an aircraft carrier, because that had never happened. See, the idea is when, when you surprise an oligarch, uh, that's what you get. So, uh, to sum it up briefly, Kimmel and Short struck out totally because they didn't do any of this to say nothing of the radar, which they neglected. See you next week on World Crisis Radio.